All right, so in today's video, I'd like to attempt to tackle the age-old question of whether or not sound is subjective. And I say attempt here because there's no way that I could comprehensively cover this. Uh, but this is gonna be a start. And the reason why I wanna get into it is because I regularly see comments from you guys, or some of you guys, as well as on forums online, where people say, well, how can any of this measurement stuff really matter if sound is subjective? That's a common line that I see. I think in just about every video that I've done where I've shown headphone measurements, you know, we obviously do headphone measurements here, and it's a very important part of the evaluative process. So in today's video, I'm gonna try and answer the question of, is sound in headphones subjective? And the answer is, Yes, but also no. So let's talk about it. I think actually a better, you know, subheading for this would be that sound is only subjective up to a point because there is absolutely a sense in which this hobby is a subjective one, but that doesn't mean that the objective stuff isn't equally or if not more important. First, I'd like to give a bit of context. There is this debate, or I should say an illusion of a debate, of subjective versus objective. The folks on the subjective side will often say, trust subjective reports, the subjective reports are the ones that matter, just tell me how it sounds. And this is where, you know, people read up on forums and they, you know, get various different impressions and so on. Then there are folks who say, I don't care about any of that, just show me the data, show me the measurements, I want to know how it performs objectively so I can better inform my purchase decision that's free from, you know, human fallibility, confirmation bias, etc. And I'm here to tell you that you can and should value both subjective reports and objective data, but there's also a reason why this debate is kind of a false one. Because very few people, even on the subjective side, would actually tell you that their experience is literally all there is. They just disagree about what matters in terms of the analysis or what we should be doing when evaluating headphones. You know, for one reason or another, what they see on the graph doesn't correlate with their experience. And so they say, well, that can't be right. There's gotta be something else. You know, maybe it's something that's not being measured. Maybe it's something that's not well understood. Maybe there's something else that accounts for my experience. I think a lot of this just comes down to not fully understanding what the graph actually does, what it means, you know, not fully understanding that when you're looking at a graph, you are seeing it not as a statement of truth or fact of the matter across the board, but rather a statement of truth about the condition of it, that product being on a particular head. And if you change that condition, I said this before, but if you change that condition, the result can change as well. So with that out of the way, in order to help explain this a little bit better, and this is probably more for folks who are new to this rather than folks who have been following our channel for quite a while, but I want to give you guys an analogy, and I've made this analogy online in a number of different places before, but I want to kind of deliver it here in a succinct format if I can. Headphones are like shoes. You wear them on your feet. Oh yeah, now this is macro contrast. <laughs> this is what I call the foot-related transfer function. <laughs> Headphones are like shoes, both in terms of their mechanical design and how they fit on the head versus how shoes fit on people's feet, but also in terms of the sound signatures and sound profiles that they have relative to how they are perceived. And yes, I'm aware that somewhere out there someone is unreasonably excited about the fact that I'm now talking about shoes and feet. Please, let's not go there. But with shoes, people have all kinds of different requirements for fit and size and you know the shape of the arch, the amount of arch support that there is, too much and it's painful, too little and it's painful. You know, there's all kinds of different uh, subject specific requirements when it comes to choosing shoes that are comfortable. And yes, of course, people buy shoes for all kinds of different reasons, but let's just assume that, you know, for the most part, people are trying to find shoes that are comfortable and fit well. So we have all these different requirements that are personal to us when it comes to choosing the right shoes for our feet. But we also want shoes to be generally foot shaped across the board. In fact, most shoes are of a similar shape with similar features inside of them to accommodate what is a foot shape for a human being. You know, there's a reason why most shoes aren't designed for tentacles. Okay, now we're getting really weird. But I think you get the idea. And the same is true for headphones and how they sound. Even though on an individual basis, we all have different preferences and requirements for how we want things to sound, in headphones, we should want the sound signature to reasonably resemble a head-related transfer function of some kind. 
And of course, you know, we use diffuse field as the head related transfer function because there's a lot of, you know, research that kind of backs up why that makes sense for timbre or tone color, as Teal called it. I'll leave some references in the description for those who are curious about this. Briefly, what is a head related transfer function? Well, that is the impact of the head and ears on incoming sound. And it's also part of how you play sounds in space. And I did a video a long time ago that touched on this topic. I'll leave that in the description as well for you guys if you're curious. But the point is you may want more bass, more mid range, more treble and so on that is an individual preference to you. At the same time, you probably want the sound signature to generally agree with what your brain expects to hear. Otherwise, things are gonna sound wrong or weird or not quite right. So let me be very clear about what I'm saying here. I'm not saying that everything needs to perfectly match an HRTF or a DFHRTF or even, you know, the line that you see in the graph, you know, the reference curve or a target curve or Harmon or anything like that. I'm just saying, in general, it is good if a headphone's frequency response or the sound signature reasonably resembles a head related transfer function of some kind. And then whatever you like for bass level or treble level or what we, we might call here ear gain level, that is specific to the individual. Just like in shoes where the amount of arch support that you have is specific to the individual. Yeah, I know this is a weird analogy, but it, it makes sense if you think about it. So sound is absolutely subjective in terms of individual preference, but only up to a point. When you go out and buy shoes, you wanna get shoes that have the right size and shape for your feet, but you also want them to be generally human foot-like. And that's really what I'm saying here for sound signature in headphones. You want the ear transfer function to be reasonably human ear shaped. But sound is also subjective in a literal sense. And this is where things get a little bit complicated. You, on an individual basis, literally have an impact on the frequency response of headphones at your eardrum. Some headphones will be more affected by the subject than others, but it is absolutely true to say that we won't necessarily all hear a given product the same way. So number one, we have different ear transfer functions and that's gonna have an influence. And number two, our head and ears impact the behavior of the headphone when it's being worn. So for example, there's bound to be differences as a result of coupling differences on different heads. One person's head is larger or another person's head is smaller, or the actual physical ear takes up a different amount of space inside the cup. And as an example with IEMs, I wanna highlight uh, this product here. This is the AudioSense DT200, and it is one of the best measuring in-ear headphones on the BNK5 and 28. For that specific head and ears is ear transfer function. But remember, my head and ears is not that head and ears. And as a result, I don't actually find this IEM to sound very good. However, this is a product that is beloved by many within the audio community. And it was brought to my attention by one of our community members and also uh, one of our writers, uh, listener is his name. He actually wrote an article that features this IEM and talks a little bit about what I'm talking about here. And I would highly encourage everybody, if you're interested in in-ear headphones and what the new measurement standard means moving forward for in-ear headphones, I highly encourage you to read this article because it goes over basically everything that you need to know about how things are changing in the IEM landscape as a result of new measurement tools and techniques. But the point is that we do not hear this IEM the same way because of our individual anatomy. And in my view, this is just a very clear example of that, where what you see on the graph isn't necessarily how it's heard. And it's not to do with the graph being wrong or anything like that. It's just that we have different ear transfer functions and our anatomy is impacting the sound differently. Now, you might be tempted to walk away from this video thinking, this just confirms that you know my experience is my experience and your experience is your experience and we can all just you know have different experiences and you know the world is just this totally relative thing and I really would discourage that. Now, this is just my opinion here. I'm just this is just me talking here, but in my view auditory relativism is a terrible epistemology. It is particularly unsatisfying because whenever you're having a conversation with somebody about how something sounds, your intention is to communicate to them what the experience is like insofar as it might be similar to them, right? And I think that if you just take this approach of, well, we all hear differently, then what's the point of having that conversation? Like, what, what are you really communicating if, if, if that's where you end up? In my view, we have to look at the data as a way of evaluating headphones, evaluating products to get an understanding of how this stuff is going to perform for a large population, not just on our heads. But we also need to know how this performs for a given person, for a real human. Because remember that real human beings and measurement rigs are different entities. Even though our measurement rigs are getting better and even though the BNK5 and 28, for example, is a more human-like mannequin head, 
um, it's, it's still not the same as giving a subjective report of the qualitative experience. And so when you're giving a report that may be different from somebody else's, the fact that it's different matters. That's key information because yeah, it might be that, you know, there's human fallibility involved and one person might be wrong, but it might also be that for that headphone or that, that product, the headphone transfer function, or essentially how the headphone varies depending on the head that it's on, is more substantial. And this is something that headphones aren't really evaluated in terms of all that much, and they probably should be. And this is also one of the benefits of measuring on multiple different rigs, multiple different heads. And that's ultimately one of the things that we're trying to do with the different measurement rigs that we're using here. Anyways, that's the end of my rant for today. And I actually have no idea how close my intuition on this is with the rest of the community. So please let me know what your thoughts are on this topic. If you if you view this stuff similarly, or if you completely disagree with what I'm saying here, let me know. I'm very curious what other people think on this topic. As usual, you can find all of our written material up on headphones.com. And I highly encourage everybody to check out that article from Listener if you're even remotely interested in in-ear headphones and how they are changing in the future, progressing in the future. Uh, that article is live right now. It's something that I think everybody should read. We will also be doing some more videos here on what we're doing in the future for uh, representing measurements, so data visualization, because we have some very exciting stuff that I think a lot of folks are going to be interested in. And yeah, just I just need to do a lot of videos on that now. But if you don't want to wait, you can also join us on our Discord and get a glimpse of that. All right, that does it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.